Before we jump into the video, I would like to give a quick shout out as always to my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much. It helps a ton. And thank you guys also for simply watching the video. So on August 25th of 2010, a new piece of Void equipment was released. It was known as the Void Deflector. It would accompany the original Void set with the three helmets as well as the Void Mace. It was seen as very versatile and very useful. Also off topic, I love the graphics of this area on RS3. Not the biggest fan of RS3 as you guys may know, uh, but if you're new, yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of RS3. But that rain and gloomy element surrounding the Void Knight Island, that is super cool and it looks really good. On the same date, and ultimately the only way to earn the deflector at the time, came a new mini game as well, known as Conquest. Conquest was a mixture of RuneScape characters and, in particular, Void Knights mashed up with some chess rules with, of course, variation. It wasn't an exact copy of chess, but it is very reminiscent of chess. It came complete with its own tutorial, as shown on screen, and each character, or piece, had different functions, different attack ranges it was capable of. Basically, each piece had its own unique tactics behind it and way you would play it. There was the Rogue, which was short range, the Ranger and Major, which had some range to them, a Halberder, a Soldier, and also the Knight and the Champion. In addition to this, the game had four different phases. The selection phase, where you would choose which units to move. The movement phase, where you would move those units however much you wanted to within their limits. The combat phase, where your pieces could fight other pieces if able. And the rally phase at the end. The player would also have access to commands, which were basically buffs that would help their units on the board. You could mix and match these as you gain points and upgraded and unlock various other abilities. And if I didn't cover it earlier, each unit had its own specific stats based on what it was. So it made the game have a little bit more versatility and each unit was unique and had their own function and things they were good at, as well as their own pitfalls. Between games, a player could even edit how their formation lined up for different strategies. Some players liked this mini game. Some players definitely liked the reward of this mini game at the time and other players did not like it, but that's to be expected. Different people like different things, that's obvious but it led to people boosting and finding other ways to get their rating up and unlock the deflector. As shown here, you have a couple friends just uh, boosting, as it's called, um, just trading wins, or maybe one was letting the other one win. And uh, yeah, so what was the reward ultimately? We know it was the deflector, but for those of you who didn't play around 2010 or simply don't remember, because you gotta think this thing was relevant for two years or less, when EOC came out, it was kind of destroyed. It just became a shield that was low tier and didn't see much use. So what the hell did this little square shield do? What could it do that, for example, an unholy book couldn't do? An unholy book had better range bonus. Why would you use the deflector? On top of things such as the unholy book that were easily accessible, you also had more in-game items such as the various dungeoneering shields. So what was the reasoning for wearing a void deflector over all these better options? Well, on paper, the void deflector's bonuses were garbage, much like the regular void pieces. If you just looked at their bonuses and didn't know about the passive, you would probably be like, these are garbage. This is shitty armor. Why would I use it? But the deflector was very versatile. Let me explain real quick. So the void deflector was very unique when compared to the other pieces of void in that it could be used to replace one piece of void minus the helmet. This means, let's say you were going for maximum range bonus and you wanted to go bossing. Well, you would wear your normal void range with the accessories such as Glaven boots at the time, I believe. I think Glavens were actually released in 2011, maybe. Maybe 2010, but you get the point. You would wear your max range accessories, your void range, and the deflector in your crossbow, but you would replace, for example, the void range top with an armadillo top. The actual void deflector thing goes in and then curves out a little bit. That was way too much work for me, so instead I just did three planks and, uh, and glued them together. And that right here is actually a slot for my arm, but it actually works really well. Sorry guys, I just had to throw that in. I found it while researching. I thought it was uh, cool slash kind of funny. It's funny that someone like just glued three wooden boards together and it kind of looks like a deflector. Anyways, how useful was this damn item? Well, it's very unique in the fact that a lot of things that are released, if you notice, are either for PVM and they're not so good at PVP. If they're a PVP-like weapon, they're not very good at PVM. There are better options. Well, the deflector was very unique in that aspect because it filled both. You could PK with it very effectively as shown in these clips. 
made your hits extremely accurate and made you very deadly. You could also take this shield to end game bosses such as Nex, which you'll see here in a little bit. So it's very unique and I think it's really cool that they released an item that can be used in PvP and PvM. Now, I'm not saying there's never instances of like items that can be used in PvM and PvP. Look at the Grazi Rapier. Uh, there's various other examples too that I'm not thinking of right now in live commentary that can be used on PVM and PvP, but you take items such as like the Volatile Nightmare Staff, why the hell would you bring that? Like yeah, it can hit 70s, but why would you bring it to a PVM scenario? There are better options. But back on topic, you just see this guy shredding, and I realize this is like a PKing video, so it's only the highlights, but that accuracy and the XP drops and the big damage, like 660, a 570, that's insane damage even by today's standards. At one point, I think he hit like a 700. That's the old uh, Xanax crossbow with the special, like if they're wearing certain like prayer items or like god items, it hits harder. Uh, but anyways, yeah, it's extremely accurate extremely deadly. A few people can't even eat out of it. Void Deflector is pretty good for uh, PKing based on what I've researched. Also a little off topic, but once you get your full Void, you can join the Void Knight Clan. Go ahead and uh, pop into that clan chat or, you know, hit them up and you can join. All right, back on topic. As you can see here, this is somewhat of a like laughable setup, I guess, by today's standards, like with necks and stuff. Uh, it could probably still work, but it's definitely not optimal. You got to keep in mind, these were the elite PVMers back in 2010 to 2011. Next was also fairly new at this time. So the most optimal inventory and most optimal gear setups were still being like figured out as well as the tactics used. But these guys were pretty high end for their time. They do the declaw and have the deflector method. So it just shows this was the most in-game PVM that was possible in 2010. And they are doing it effectively with the deflector setup. So it just shows very effective equipment. I also really like the squabbles that are going on in the clan chat, if you can see that. It's just peak 2010. So we figured out it's very useful for PKing, pretty useful for PVM as well. In fact, one of the most optimal methods when the deflector was released was known as the deflector method, where you'd use the setup I talked about earlier with the armadillo top and range and a melee spec weapon for that first phase. So we know it was useful in 2010, you know, about two years, give or take, a little bit less than that before EOC was released. So where does it stand today? Can you still obtain it? And is it still good? Let's get into that. So I went on RS3, let's zoom this in for the footage. Uh, went on RS3 just to see if it was still obtainable. I figured, of course, it would be, right? And it is. It's 150 uh, commendation points. You probably still need the ranking, maybe? I don't know. It's a pretty dead minigame. Maybe there's a few people doing it on minigame spotlight. Speaking of minigame spotlight, Conquest is not the only way to get the deflector now. You can get it with Thaler. It's the red currency shown here. You can get Thaler by pretty much playing any minigame, meaning... You do not need to play Conquest alone in order to get the Deflector. You can play Castle Wars, for example, get the Thaler, come by the Deflector if you want it. It's way less useful than it was. It's a lower tier shield and shields on RS3, the various skills that uh, heal and deflect damage, I think they go off the shield tier. So because the Deflector is a low tier, it's fairly useless. Anyways, guys, that's about it for me. This is the RuneScape Historian checking out. I hope you guys enjoyed and thank you for watching. Later.